And so the next reaction that we're going to see in this chapter is hydroboration oxidation. It's also our introduction into syn addition. So the hydroxy mercuration, demercuration, or the alkoxy mercuration, demercuration, that was an example of anti-addition. This is our syn addition introduction. So let's take a look at the observed reaction here. So as we look at this, we're going to see, um, again, your alkene. No surprise. The, again, there's going to be two reagents. One is BH3, THF. THF is tetrahydrofuran. So um, that's your first step. And really, the way that's made is it's with B2H6 and THF, and you get this thing called BH3THF that, that looks like this structure. Okay, now um, as far as we're concerned, we're going to just use BH3 structure, right, in our mechanisms. It's just easier. Most textbooks will do this too. Okay, so notice here that we're, uh, that we're sin up here at the top, so you get an H that's been added. Right, and a BH2. All right. Notice also that the H went to the carbon that has fewer H's. All right, so that's anti-Markovnikov. Uh, the second step is your oxidation. So oxidation, you're gaining bonds to oxygen. So that BH2 is replaced with an OH. So it's sin because they're both on the same side. And it's anti-Markovnikov because that H went to the carbon that had fewer H's, right? Now, a little note about BH3. So, remember boron um, has empty P orbitals in it. Like we saw that somewhere back in chapter 1, 2, or 3 when we were looking at the structure of boron. So, BH3, if we take it and look at it like on its side, so normally it's this, right? It's like your typical introduction into something that's sp2 hybridized, right? You end up having um, that bond, well, three sp2 bonds, and you have a unhybridized p orbital hanging out up at the top there. All right, so um, as we turn this thing over on its side, we'll see that it has these p orbitals, just one, I should say, a p orbital that's here. And it's those p orbitals that are going to be reacting. So that's what's going to come over and sit on our carbon-carbon double bond p orbitals, right? Because remember, that carbon-carbon pi bond is this guy, right? So these orbitals here are going to have to sit and touch and interact with the boron's orbitals. That's how they're going to react. Now, this molecule can kind of be divided into these two segments. So we've got this segment over here on the left with a tiny little H. And then we've got this big other section over there, which is your boron with two H's. It's, it's definitely larger than just a single hydrogen by itself. So because of that, um, that side, this side right here, is more bulky. So this side goes to the side of the carbon-carbon double bond that's less substituted because that side of the bond is less bulky, okay? So let's look down below at an example of this thing. So here's that same molecule that we worked with before, right? We're rotating it over on its side and, um, and we have to consider top and bottom attack. So what I wanna do is I wanna look at the addition of this thing right, um, of BH3 here. So over here we have BH3, right, and that addition here, that's your BH3 looking at the bottom attack. So this molecule has two carbons on it, right, for our carbon-carbon double bond. So this side of the molecule is a larger size compared to this side because this side only has an H atom doesn't have a methyl. So it's smaller on this side. This side is smaller. So it can accommodate the boron part 
of BH2 better because boron is the big part. And this is the little part. So little part goes to the big part, right? Big part goes to the littler or the smaller part. So I'll show you, this is sometimes written out for transition states and stuff like that. You won't have to do this, but here we're gonna have our carbon-carbon double bond. Right? And what happens is that BH2 comes over here with its P orbital, right? And its H atom is carrying that along with it. And what happens is a bond is made here and a bond is made there. Those are the new bonds, okay? Now, the bond between the H atom and the boron is broken and between the carbon and the carbon are broken. Now, sometimes the way they show this with their arrows is they show this blue bond coming over here, right? Those electrons are moving there and that blue bond coming over to do this. Now, sticking off of these guys, and I, I did give myself a lot of space, but we have what do we have there? Ethyl, your methyl, and then ethyl and H. So this, what I've drawn right here, is your kind of transition state. Now, what that leads to down here below is, and let me pull this in a little bit here, is our H atom connected to a carbon, connected to another carbon, connected to BH2. Okay, so they're on the same side. The wedge and the dash on the carbons, whatever is on those, stays there. They don't interchange or anything like we saw before. We're just going to copy them down. Okay, so if we come from the bottom, what would that look like? So these H's here are on the top. If we come from the bottom, then wouldn't the H be here? Connected to some carbon, to another carbon, and then down here, a BH2 here. That's what the bottom attack would look like. And then you got your, what is it, your ethyl, your methyl, H, and your ethyl there. All right, so kind of just looking at that right now. That's your sin addition, okay? That's your first step. So if you can just remember the orientation and the fact that they're added at the same time, then that kind of tells you what your end product is going to be. Now, the second step of this reaction is actually very straightforward. All we're going to do is just take off the BH2 part. Right, so these guys here, remember they're still both sin, but those boron parts are just going to be replaced with an OH and an OH over here. Now, kind of hard to see, but these, these are enantiomers of each other. So if you take the structure over here on the right-hand side and you kind of rotate it around that direction, that would put your OH group here. It would put your H group right here. Right. And as we move our OH around, that H would be in the front. Ethyl would be back here. Right. And then our... Um, Let's see, with our H atom, or ethyl in the front, and our methyl group back there. So those are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. All right, guys, so just a, a, a final note here. Syn addition, anti-Markovnikov. Been kind of talking about that in the last couple of minutes. Now, one, two little notes here. One little note in um, just a summary. So... Um, when we form our product, so just kind of looking back at this thing, right? we get this BH2 there. So that boron has two more hydrogens that can technically add across a carbon-carbon double bond. This is more important in lab where you have to worry about stoichiometry. So here you've got your BH2, right, from that product on the other page, added to another alkene, right? Then you get this. Right, added to another alkene, then you get that. So 
stoichiometrically, it's something that we have to be concerned with if we're finding out limiting reagents and stuff like that um, next semester. It's a lab topic usually. All right, let's do a little summary problem here together. So um, hopefully you practice a little bit um, and then we'll come back and look at this thing. But let's take a look together at it right now. So here is a problem that has this cyclopentane with HGOAC water in ABH4. So as we go through and look at that, we say, okay, well, this is going to be anti. We know that. Okay. And we know that the OH, so we're going to add an alcohol. We're going to get an alcohol here. Right, so the OH group gets added there. We know that that's going to go to this carbon right here. And we know that because we're going to form that three-membered ring. And when we form that ring, right, just, so just like a little side note up here above, right, so kind of what forms here is this. Right, when we get that ring, you get something that looks like this. Here's your HG. OAC plus charge, you get this guy, right, plus you get its partner, this OAC, with that on a wedge, a dash, and that's where the bigger delta plus is on this top carbon here. Okay, so we're not asking for the mechanism here, we just want to know what the, uh, what the product of this reaction is. So as we come through and do this, water is going to attack, and it can attack this position. Okay, and when it does that, we're going to end up swinging that HGOAC out, and then it will be replaced with a hydrogen atom, right? So what we're going to get here is one, two, three, four, five. This guy stays the same right here, and we'll get an OH group here, and then um, a methyl group, right? So that should be an OH. And then the other thing that we get is we get that guy with our um, CH3 out and our OH group pointing back. Okay, we end up getting both of those products. Uh, these, in this case, they're diastereomers to each other, mostly because of, a, of this guy right there, right? Now down here, that's BH3, THF, so we know this is gonna be sin. Right, and we're still going to get an alcohol here. Right, so we're going to get an alcohol, just like up above. That's an alcohol. All right, and then we know that the boron part, right, the boron part's going to go here. That's where the BH2 part's going to go. All right, and then the H part's going to go right here. That's because this is a larger substituted carbon, and this is less bulky on that side. So in the end, we're going to get this fellow here, um, we're going to have an H, I'm going to draw this out for you guys, you have an H there, and remember it's sin, so I like to, for this I like to keep my H in there, because it helps me remember where my OH is going to go, because I know they're sin, so they're sin to each other. And then the other product that we're going to get there is the diastereomer of this, so that would be an H pointing out, and then an OH pointing out here, which don't forget you got your methyl group over there too. All right, so again, the differences here in this case is that the regiochemistry is important. So OH comes in the top carbon, more substituted here. OH goes on the bottom carbon, the less substituted there. All right, and then the manner in which they're added, <coughs> the manner in which they're added is also important. Anti versus sin.